Sorry? Sorry? She has a question. Later. 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 later, later. It will benefit. No, no, no. During the... Huh, if it benefit. is pertaining to what we've already done, you can ask in the beginning. So Otherwise, that it will yeah. help, na? Good boy. All right. Jai Baba, Jai Baba, Jai Baba. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am getting old. <laughs> You're from Pune. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Last time you came with your husband and yeah. See, she has a good memory, not me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fifty seconds more to go. Baba liked it. Jai Baba. Baba. Nothing is real but God. Nothing matters but love for God. God is the only reality. All else that seems real is illusory. God and I are one. Meher Baba. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thanks to beloved Baba and welcome to this uh, session three of God Speaks. I would just briefly want to wrap up what we did in the first two sessions. In the first session we gave an overview of how God Speaks came about, the importance of God Speaks, how Baba wanted each and every one of his lovers to at least read it once in their lifetime. And so our purpose here is to read God Speaks whether we understand it or not. Because Baba himself said that there are areas which are ununderstandable. In order to understand that which is beyond mind, the mind has to go. So with the, with the, with the capacity of the mind, with the finiteness of mind, you cannot understand that which is infinite. That was the first session. There were two main misunderstandings that cropped up in the first session, which I have tried to clear in the second session. One is people use maya and illusion as synonyms. Same thing. No. Maya is the creator of illusion. Maya is the principle of ignorance. Maya is not in time and space. Time, space and cause, causation is in Maya. That is what was clarified, giving lots of details. I won't go into that again. And the second misunderstanding was people felt that ego is something wrong. Ego is something bad. Ego is something evil. Baba has clarified, and we did that last time, that ego is a stitwa. Ego is existence. Ego is the real thing. Ego can never be annihilated. Ego can only be transformed. What is to be annihilated is the mind. Mind has to be annihilated. Ego has to be transformed. First, there is the natural ego, which is in the Paratpar Parbrahma state, the beyond the beyond state of God, where God is, but consciousness is not. Then start right, right from creation, which means gases, stone, metal, minerals, etc., etc., till human being, till the entire involutionary journeys is about to be complete. That is still the state of peer, which is on the sixth plane of consciousness. All this is false ego, or ego mind, or finite ego, or separative ego. And then, at the fag end of the journey, when you have realization, anal hak, aham brahmasmi, I am God state, God realization, self realization. It is then that the ego is trans transmuted from false ego to the real ego. So these two things we clarified in the last session. And then we had a long reading of introduction to the first uh, edition of God Speaks. 
सम जेंटलमैन देयर सेट अरे जस्ट रीडिंग 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 ओनली नो एक्सप्लेनेशन आई सेट इफ आई स्टार्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग द इंट्रोडक्शन आई डोंट नो वेर इट विल एंड सो देन अगेन देर वॉज सम सजेशंस दैट वाई डोंट वी जस्ट डाइव इन टू पार्ट वन ऑफ गॉड स्पीक्स विच इज स्टार्टिंग द स्टार्टिंग ऑफ गॉड स्पीक सो जस्ट टू बैलेंस बोथ ऑफ दैम we are going to now do introduction to uh, edition 2 second edition of god speaks we are going to read from there and hopefully it should be completed today and then next session onwards which is going to be on the 18th which means the next saturday not not a fortnight later on we'll be doing actual part 1 of god speaks let's see how the going is going so saumya will now be reading the introduction to the second edition this is the second edition where much after baba dropped his body this was this was brought out published but whatever alterations or changes that have been that have been done here have been approved minutely checked and approved by beloved baba go ahead in the 18 years that have passed since publication of the first edition of god speaks the flood tide of meher baba's presence has spread around the world and his name has become a symbol of hope and faith to millions at the end of january 4 years ago he himself dropped the body which now lies interred <coughs> in the tomb prepared many years ago under his own careful instructions at mehrabad near ahmednagar india In this period it has been possible to witness the impact of the universality of Meher Baba's approach to the problems of the world and the uniformity of response of the peoples of all faiths and sects to his love from the earliest days Meher Baba had pointed out that he belonged to no particular religious group rather that it was his objective to breathe vitality into the words of truth handed down in all the great world faiths in repeated clear concise statements he has underlined his independence of action and universality of approach when baba was once asked which religion he belonged to his very lucid and straight reply was i belong to no religion every religion belongs to me my own personal religion is that of my being the ancient infinite one and the religion i teach to all and the truth of all religion is what he teaches to all these are not the exact words so in other words baba does not belong to any religion all religions belong to him at one time i had i saw a, a small boy wearing a t-shirt which said you know god is too big to be accommodated in any one religion in other words we fight because of religion but god is in all the religions and he is beyond all the religions and the religion i teach to all is love for god which is the truth of all religion so sometimes there is a delayed <laughs> remembrance that comes to me so please tolerate <laughs> sorry yeah this was given out in the second edition was published in 1973 this um, edition the the what we call as introduction is written by iv o dus whom we all know as the murshida of the sufism reoriented appointed by baba himself and don e stevens so they jointly wrote this second edition quote i have no connection with politics all religions are equal to me and all castes and creeds are dear to me but though i ap appreciate all isms religions and political parties for the many good things that they seek to achieve i do not and cannot belong to any of these isms religions or political parties for the absolute truth which equally including them transcends all of them and leaves no room for separative divisions which are all equally false 
The unity of all life is integral and indivisible. It remains unassailable and inviolable in spite of all conceivable ideological differences. When we say un, unassailable, which is, it is very secured, it is undeniable. When we say inviolable, it means unbreachable, unbreakable. And when we say conceivable, ideological differences, differences, body of, body of beliefs or principles, the doctrines. So what Baba is trying to say is, in spite of all these so-called apparent divisions, which are false, God is in everything and he is also beyond everything. So that is one aspect uh, when we, of course, I'll be coming to that perhaps later, um, when Baba gave out this uh, poem called Tum Hi To Ho, You Alone Exist, where Bauji supposedly had written, you are in the pig, you are in the gnat, you are in the mosquito, you are in this, you are in that. And people were quite uh, disturbed with that kind of a uh, poem. Little knowing that it was Baba who actually added a few stanzas to that poem. And that is where Baba said that it is now time for people to be so matured enough to understand that God is not only in the good and the beautiful and the noble, but he is also in that which we call as dirty and filthy and not so noble. So in other words, what Baba is trying to convey is that he is in everything and also he is above everything. I am equally approachable to one and all, big and small, to saints who rise and sinners who fall, through all the various paths that give the divine call. I am approachable alike to saint whom I adore and to sinner whom I am for. And equally through Sufism, Vedantism, Christianity or Zoroastrianism and Buddhism and other isms of all kind and also directly through no medium of isms at all. So he can be directly approached through without any isms or you can approach him to any other isms. I remember an instance where one of the Westerners had come to Baba and uh, asked, said, that I, I, you say that you were the same as Christ, you were Christ. What's the harm if I follow Christ? I am following Christ. So Baba very beautifully said, you know, that yes, no harm at all. But then he underlined by saying, Christ was, Baba is. So that makes a world of difference, you see. And like Alobaji would say, you know, in Hindi, that Ram ke zamane ka sikka aaj nahi chalta hai. The coins which were in circulation in the market at the time of Rama or Krishna, you can't use it now in the market. So this is the time and we are so fortunate to have been born in a time when the avatars, avataric period is still on. The thorny subject of Meher Baba's avatarhood, Christ, Messiah status, has also clarified greatly in these intervening years. When the first edition of God Speaks was placed before the public in 1955, the fact of Baba's avataric function had been described to those other than his closest disciples for only a few years. Before that time, most people had regarded him as a great saint or a perfect master without guessing the further significance of his mission. In, in 1954, however, Baba stated clearly and for the first time publicly that he was the avatar of the age. Already having recognized himself as a perfect master, the devotee had no problem making allowance for this extension of universal responsibility. Now, about Baba's avatarhood and his declaration that he is the avatar, the Indians feel that it was the first time that Baba declared on the 10th of February 1954 at Mehrasthana when he, and it is a fact, 
where he actually appointed on the alphabet board, Autar Meher Baba Ki Jai. The English feel that Baba had already declared himself to be the Autar in 1930s when he went to, to, to Britain, to England. But the fact of the matter is that right from 1922, now, so I have just taken down some notes. This is not a part of God Speaks. But since we are recording it, it should rather go. And these are all references from the online Lord Meher. Now, online Lord Meher is an evolving, uh, you can say, uh, evolving subject. In other words, the page numbers which I have written here may not be there tomorrow. Because David Fenster has been doing a wonderful job of correcting and collating so many things. And as and when he feels that, no, this is not correct, this is correct, he adds it or takes out from the Lord Meher. And so it's in, it is still evolving. You can say it is still evolving. So as of yesterday night, <laughs> these are the page numbers from Lord Meher online. And I'll go to it. Now, this is they're all online page numbers, so I won't be repeating it online, online. January 1922. Last day at Sakori. We all know what happened at Sakori. Upasni Maharaj bowed down to Merwan and said, you know, he said, Merwan, you are Adi Shakti, the primal force. You are the avatar. He said this, and the page numbers are 82, page number 82 and 257. Then in June 1927, as, as early as 27, Baba says, of the 56 God-realized souls on earth, the five perfect masters are the most important. And the one, capital O, who is the highest of all, is the avatar, myself. He has already declared it, myself. I come every 700 to 1400 years, and it is undoubtedly a very rare and lucky thing for each of you to have the opportunity of loving me individually even since even the Sadgurus long to touch the avatar physically. Page number 820. June 1927. There will be a terrible war in the near future and it will be more destructive and horrible than the last one, which means the First World War. America will take a leading role and there will be bloodshed. Millions will die. The war will be so horrendous that there will not even be time to dispose of the heaps of corpse. It will be then that I will manifest myself as the avatar. 826. January 1928, Baba concluded his declaration by repeating, a great war will shortly take place and when it is raging furiously, I will come forward and manifest as the avatar. Page number 881. November 1930. This was to Paul Brunton. Once I publicly announce myself as the avatar, no one will be able to withstand my power. Page number 1219. September 1931. This is those, uh, the English people feel that this is where Baba had declared himself to be the avatar the first time. But be before that, so many times he had said. In the known history of the world, this was the first time that the avatar was consecrating the soil of the Western Hemisphere by his presence, which is a fact. And also for the first time, Baba candidly disclosed to his followers in England that he was the avatar, the Messiah, the Christ, for whom the world had long been waiting Whereas, in India, all his devotees were still referring to him as a Sadguru, a perfect master. Page number 1265. And last, 10th February 1954. Baba's announcement brought tears to the eyes of some and raising his hand, after running his finger on the alphabet board, Baba spelled out through Eraj, Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai all took up the declaration, repeating it several times. This was the first time that Baba himself had spelled on the board, Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai, page number 3451. So these are all the declarations of Baba, sorry? The book Avatar by Jesus. 
Okay, there was a book by, uh, yes, uh, after Baba's declaration in the West, there's a book, Avatar, which I think came up in 1940s. 1947, the Avatar. The Avatar is a book which Jean Adriel had written. So it is, not, it is not that it was in 54 that Baba was known as the Avatar. Ever since 1922, his, his, in, in bits and pieces, Baba was declaring himself as the Avatar. Go ahead. To the outsider, intrigued by the caliber of Meher Baba, but lacking the opportunity to become absorbed into his being through personal surrender, it was still early to try to judge the external activities and results of the avataric role. Surprisingly, very few people took strong public difference with the statement that Baba was the avatar of the age. Many, through reading God Speaks itself, were convinced that such a work could come only from one who had attained to the highest spiritual status, and therefore it would be better to wait and observe before making any judgment. Oddly enough, of those who had not encountered Baba in the flesh, it was not the traditionally spiritually inclined who first began to accept him as the ancient one. It was the young, the rebels, the experimentalists, questing for the clues to meaning in a life of confusion and frustration, who suddenly began to recognize the image and the words of this silent master. So what Baba is trying to say, those who were in that orthodox spirituality, they were not the ones who were attracted to Baba or who took to Baba. It is those who were rebels, those who were experimenting. And what, ba what I understand is experimenting with drugs and things like that, that they were the ones who took to Baba. And the three names that come to my mind now is Dr. Alan Cohen, Rick Chapman, and Robert Driffers. They, these were the ones who were deeply into uh, drugs. And when they got to know of Baba, there was a communication between Baba and these three. And Baba had very, very simply said, if God can be achieved through the medium of any drug, then God is not worthy of being God. Such a powerful statement. And when, when the such conversations and communication took place, these are the people who not only, you know, shunned drugs or dropped drugs altogether, but they became, they became the pioneers of, you know, of uh, talking in, on radio talks and visiting the schools and colleges and telling the young students how, how ephemeral, how absolutely uh, transient, how impermanent this effect of drug is, and they were like soldiers, they were angels, I would say, who propagated the Baba's message about no drugs. And Baba was so particular, the very few things where Baba was really against, and one of them is the drugs. I remember Don Stevens telling Baba once, he said, so he narrated to us, you know, that once he asked Baba that I just want to try it just once, to know what it is all about. You know, people talk about, and Baba was so stern, his face turned red, eyes, you know, and said, not even once. You know, he said it is, that taking drugs is harmful physically, mentally, and spiritually. He said, not even once. Don't even think of trying that. Okay, go ahead. Their instincts, sharpened by need and stretched by repeated failing, failures of approach, suddenly found the answer in a photo of Baba, a book of his discourses, a pity statement about his life printed on a small card. So small, if we see the stories of so many people who have come to Baba, just a small poster, don't worry, be happy, and Baba is smiling, you know, or some such thing, you know, Pity would mean it's a very, very strong, very strong statement which those people could not avoid. So they followed the track and then that is how they came to Baba. As Baba had so often stated in the decades preceding, the advent of the avatar and the acceptance of his word is precipitated by the needs of creation. When the need is great, the avatar comes 
and his word is accepted because it is the only thing which can satisfy man's mankind's search for worthy and dependable goals has been growing for generations in our day it has become so insistent that it has lashed out in wave after wave of social turbulence into the social ferment steps mehr baba with a clear statement of the purpose of creation and an all embracing love so powerful that the raw abrasions of need are soothed so abruptly as to lead to silence and tears of relief repeatedly baba describes creation as the vehicle by which god's impulse to know his own divinity consciously is brought to fruition so what is creation after all creation is nothing but a divine incubator in which the consciousness of the soul incubates and becomes perfect so unless and until there is something opposite of what god is god would not know what he is unless he experiences the exact opposite of what he is like for example um knowing the false as false is knowing the truth in the first session we did all this when real light appears this darkness which you think is light disappears in other words in order to know the good as good you can only know the good as good after experiencing that which is so called not good or bad so in other words god was infinite so the creation is finite god is all powerful the creation creation experiences helplessness god is all knowing so creation experiences ignorance god is all bliss so creation experiences suffering so it is only with the experiencing of the opposite the other opposite that we will experientially know the truth and that is why the dedication which we did in the first session the dedication of this book god speaks is dedicated to the universe the illusion that sustains the reality see i i hope you i'm i'm making sense we might say that oh it's the reality that is supposed to sustain the illusion no the illusion that sustains the reality the illusion that helps the reality to know the reality as the reality i hope i'm making sense so in other words it is only through the experiencing of the opposite that we know experientially that this is the truth like last time we did you know uh a dream becomes a dream only when you wake up on waking up you you know it as a dream as long as you are dreaming the dream is not a dream the dream is a reality it's only when we wake up we realize oh that was just a dream so baba says that all that we are experiencing the roller coaster ride the good the bad the ugly is nothing but the divine dream but we take it as a reality you see in careful statements in god speaks he describes the manner in which the mechanism for the generation of consciousness is developed the reality of infinite unity and the consciousness evolved through resolving the infinite challenges posed within the duality of creation is traced in the most minute detail the physical form that acts as the medium for experiencing the opposites of creation is shown to be an increasingly complex byproduct of this will of god to know himself consciously the very force of evolution of form becomes not a random selection of the fittest but a result of the necessity of the residues of experience to express themselves through increasingly more complex instruments the evolution and perfecting of consciousness is itself described as the entire purpose of creation so the whole purpose of creation is to 
let's say, go from unconscious divinity to conscious divinity. Divinity is the given. Divinity is the platform. You can never, ever be not divine. Irrespective of what we may see in the world, Baba says that divinity is the given. When Baba was once asked, you know, what is evil? Baba says, there is no evil. It is only a lower degree of goodness. So in other words, when we think Advait, oneness, unity, there is no dui, there is no duality, there is no opposition, there is no this and that. It's all one. But in that one, there is a lower level of that one and there is a higher level of one, that one. And so evil, what we call as evil, is nothing but the lower end of the goodness. And in regards to the evolutionary process, it is well to remember always that the beginning is a beginning in consciousness, the evolution is an evolution in consciousness, the end, if there be an end, is an end in consciousness. In other words, when we talk about evolution, reincarnation, involution, it, Baba is talking about evolution of consciousness. Uh, according to Charles Darwin, he feels, or his, his theory is, that as more and more complex bodies are gained, the consciousness gets more and more developed. That is his theory. Baba's theory is entirely opposite that. Baba says that as more and more consciousness is gained, that means more and more intricate samskaras are earned and accumulated, more and more complex forms or body is needed to experience those samskaras. In other words, form is a byproduct of the evolution of consciousness. In other words, consciousness precedes the form or form follows the consciousness. That's what Baba says. There is no volume. That's okay. Some references. Okay. Yeah. These, as well as the host of balanced practical insights into daily life given out by Meher Baba over the decades have been what the young have cried out for. They recognize Baba empirically. Empirically would mean experientially. Baba is so smart that, okay, intellectual aspect also he tries to, to uh, satisfy or satiate. But he knows our, our weaknesses, our heart, and he will only touch that part where, through experience, we know that Baba is what he claims to be, he is. So each one of us who are here and everywhere, you know, we know from experience, there is no logical explanation to that, but we just know it. Like intellectually, we may not be able to summarize as to how is it that I am saying that Meher Baba is God. But deep down, through the experience, we know and we proclaim that we know that Baba is God. So that is the meaning of this word, empirically. They recognize Baba empirically for what he is, the answer to the dilemma of modern life. This is exactly what Baba has, had stated that the avatar must be. Thus, the hand and the glove fit exactly. In looking at the match, one can have no doubt that Baba is precisely what he has said he is, the avatar of the age. But what about Meher Baba's more personal life during this period? Despite his long predicted serious automobile accident near Prague, Oklahoma in 1952 and a, and a later even graver one near Satara in India in December 1956 in which his hip joint was smashed and Dr. Nilo killed outright. Nevertheless, the 15 years encompassed much intense inner and outer work. I'm a little touchy about the word accident because the accident was never an accident. If you research Baba's life story, I call it self-orchestrated 
self-imposed suffering by way of an accident. I choose to say it that way, you know, because even the second accident, Satara accident, if you see, uh, okay, the first one, when Baba started out, you know, Baba asked Elizabeth Patterson, have you taken your license, your insurance? And she said, no. So Baba said, go and pick it up from, so they drove to her home and picked up the insurance papers. See, means everything is, everything is well orchestrated, you know. 20 years by the date, the accident took place on 24th May, 1952. On 24th May, 1932, Baba randomly picked up a wild flower and handed it to Elizabeth and simply said, remember this date and she put her put the flower in the Bible forgot about it 20 years by the date 24th February 1952 the accident took place where Elizabeth was driving the car and she forgot about that much later when she was shifting homes and she went through those Bibles she she saw that flower and below that it was written Baba handed over this flower to her and said 24th May 1932 because she was feeling very guilty that she was the one who made the avatar suffer that way. I'm just digressing a little bit just to uh, in the second so-called self-orchestrated, self-imposed suffering of the accident that was on the 2nd of December 1956. Here if you go to see, of course, the accident took place. Era says that the steering wheel just did not cooperate, inexplicable, and it fell in the, in the ditch and Baba broke his entire right side and all that. And the case, court case went on for several years. Ba uh, Erach's license, driving license was impounded. He was not supposed to drive later on. And in the final date of judgment, the, the day of judgment, what did the judge say? An act of God. The judgment for this accident was said, an act of God. So there is a film also called the act, An Act of God. So we cannot, we, I, I, this, as I said, I'm very uh, fussy about this thing. You should not just say, you know, oh, accident, Baba met with an accident. No, he orchestrated the way he, he went about to ensure that the accident takes place. Now, that's a different story. We can talk on that at length, but let's come to the subject. With reference to these two accidents, one more. Oh, sorry, about Dr. Nilkan. He was killed outright in that accident. For a newcomer, you know, you say, somebody is traveling with God and he gets killed and Baba is not bothered also. Nilu was asked, you know, uh, as to how would you like to die? And Nilu said, Baba, I would like to die like this, jatpat, you know, and in your presence, when you are there with me, in your presence. This is what happened. And on the day when they started the journey from Satara, the Mandali says that Nilu is, Dr. Nilu was generally a, a sort of a reserved type, but he was very jubilant, he was very, very quite unlike Nilu was his behavior on that day, 2nd of December 1956, when they set out for see, in the, in the guise of seeing a cricket match at Pune. They went from Satara to Pune in that way. With reference to these two accidents, one must keep in mind that it is a world of systematic balances in which we live, with none of the magic of the fairy wand. The avatar himself trues the balance by the very process of the suffering which he willingly undergoes. On these two occasions, he has spilled his blood on two continents for the sake of what he was known must be done. So, there is an imbalance of samskaras and the only way to balance it is that the avatar takes upon himself the suffering and balances out. When somebody asked Baba about or said a statement, made a statement, Jesus was crucified and Baba Jesus was not crucified. He got himself crucified in order to serve the purpose for which he had come. He had come to take on the suffering. So he also orchestrated, contrived, said certain things so as to trigger and instigate the other people to put him on the cross. So it was not that Jesus was crucified. He got himself crucified. In the same way, it is not an accident. Baba ensured 
that he meets with these accidents and in the two continents he spills his blood. In 1956, he made a trip to Europe and America and on around the world, <coughs> visiting Australia for the first time. This 12th visit to the West is amply chronicled in The Awakener, Volume 4, Number 1, and Volume 5, Number 2, and other works. His 13th trip to the West in 1958, including this time only Australia and America, produced an intense atmosphere of the reciprocal play of love between lovers and beloved. The Awakener, Volume 5, Numbers 3 and 4. On this occasion, it was clear that Baba was to be for those who knew the song of their own hearts. The public was not discouraged from seeking the presence of this intriguing being, but no publicity was given to the visit. It was a true living in the presence of the beloved. In retrospect, one understands that Baba knew that for many, this would be the last personal contact. In fact, he stated as much, but we did not hear him. In 1962, Meher Baba again performed the magic of drawing the close ones to him, but in a significantly new pattern this time. In the past, there had been only the most limited mixing of his followers from the East and the West. In 1962, however, the mixing was deliberate and on a grand scale. And the mixing was such that this happened in 1962, November 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, the East-West gathering. You know, it rained without any warning. You know, it just rained and uh, many of the Westerners, Baba had said you know, to go, in, go and take shelter and their clothes were all wet. And before coming to Guru Prasad, Baba has asked the ladies, you know, to carry some extra clothing of their, you know, the gowns and dresses and whatever, you know. So the Western women were in the Eastern clothes, you know, because all their <laughs> clothes had gone wet. And so Baba said, oh, this is like a sign of blessing. And 50 years from 1962, where we had the uh, golden jubilee of the uh, East-West gathering here in Merabad, surprisingly, it rained again on that particular day. For those who were present, you would have observed that, yeah. Hundreds poured into Pune, India, the site of the meeting from Europe, <coughs> America, and Australia. Other thousands came from Iran, Pakistan, and India. In 1962, East-West gathering at the beautiful residence of Guru Prasad in Pune was an epic of the joining of streams of love from widely different natural springs of culture. For five days, Meher Baba sat with this closed invitational group of some thousands and mixed together the elements and his word is accepted because it is the only <laughs> mixed together the elements of disparity within the solvent disparity different types of people easterners westerners young old rich poor you know there was a disparity and mix the dis within the solvent, solvent is that which resolves and dissolves and makes it into one. Res solvent that produces the only true unity, which is supreme love. Go ahead. This one is my mistake, by the way. Wonders, <laughs> one wonders how this incredible being was able to draw from a body seriously hampered by long, hard use and crippling accidents the physical resource to greet and bless the multitude for long hours each day and well into the night. But the Mandali would say that throughout the night Baba would not sleep, he would be suffering, he would have his body pressed and he would say, how am I going to sit and what am I going to do tomorrow? How will, will, it, how will it appear to my lovers? They will see that I am sick and tired. And, and this is what the Mandali say. The moment he steps out of the room, out of the threshold, he would walk like a, you know, like a king, like a lion. And for the entire day, he would just be either doing this or touching somebody's head. And 
through the night, you know, uh, till the night it will go on. And the moment again Baba <laughs> enters his room, he would be that state. Oh, I'm so tired, I'm exhausted, I'm suffering, do this to me, do that to me. So this is Baba's Leela, that for his lovers, he suffers so much. On the sixth day, he went even further. The gates of Guru Prasad were thrown open and the masses were allowed to come before him for the coveted spiritual blessing. From sun up to sunset. Coveted would mean highly sought after spiritual blessings. From sun up to sunset, the living stream passed before him and when finally the gates were closed at dark, a long ribbon of humanity, four, four abreast, still stretched far into the distance, hoping against hope for the glance or the touch. From this time, with brief exceptions in 1963 and 1965 for his Indian devotees, Meher Baba went into increasingly restricted seclusion. Finally, in August 1966, he issued instructions that no one would be allowed to see him except at his own specific invitation. There were very, very few invitations given and even fewer exceptions made. He let all know that he was in the crowning phases of his universal work and then finally that that work had been achieved to his 100% satisfaction. This work was also call, called the exclusion work. Last three years, Baba was in deep seclusion, not meeting anybody except for a few occasions. And uh, he said that the work in itself was not difficult. The work he was doing on various planes of consciousness or levels of consciousness was not difficult. The difficulty was to keep my connection with the gross body. And in order to do that, he had to bang his thighs with the fist. Thum. And, and the mandli outside would hear this thumping happening all the time. You know, he, would, he would thump his thighs in such a way just to keep the connection with the gross. And later on, somebody, I think it was Noshirwan Ansar, if I'm mistaken or not, he had the uh, opportunity to have Baba's darshan. And Baba made him feel his thighs. And he said that I felt as if I was touching a wall. It was so rough, so hard, so thick. So that is what. And on 30th of July, 1968, he declared that my work is done 100% to my satisfaction. So what the work is, we do not know. What it means, we do not know. Suffice to say that just uh, how much he suffered for all of us, for, for the sake of all of us. This should have been the signal <coughs> to his <coughs> devoted followers. But one never conceives of the day when the beloved will not be physically at hand. On February 1st, 1969, the news spread quickly around the world via the network of deep devotion that Meher Baba had dropped his body shortly after noon of the previous day. For seven days, the shell lay garlanded and strewn with fragrant rose petals in the tomb long prepared for the occasion, head propped up on a light pillow inverted comma, so that I may give my lovers darshan without having to rise, inverted commas. Because Manli was saying, Baba, you are in no state of health to give any darshan. So Baba said, you don't worry about that. If I cannot sit, I will give my darshan sleeping. I'm sure my lovers will understand that, you know, only thing is just raise my head a little higher. So he was giving indications to that effect. And this darshan will be only for my lovers, not for the general public. This darshan would be the last given in silence. So all these indications Baba was giving. So that's what the reference is. That, uh, so that I may give my lovers darshan without having to rise up. He had seen what would be necessary and, as always, had prepared for it. His devotees recognized the passing away of the infinite as infinite in its own infinitude. The entombment 
was followed in April, May, and January. June. By, June, sorry, June. by visits of large groups from the east and the west to Gurprasad, to Mehrazad, the residence, and to Mehrabad, the tomb. Baba had planned well in advance. Baba's planning was always well in advance. You see, uh, a darshan program, a sawas program, April, May, and June of 1969. Baba was not physically there, you know. And uh, people had booked their tickets, they had chartered flights and everything, you know. And in order to honor the invitation of beloved Baba, which he had given to his lovers all over the world, including, of course, India, Pakistan, and everywhere. Lovers had come exactly on the dates which were allocated to individual countries and places. So all of them honored Baba's invitation of having his darshan. So th there was a chair there because I was there in Guru Pras I was The chair is there. And we never felt that Baba was not there. The program would go on, Mani, Mera, everybody would get, there'll be some talk, there'll be some bhajan. And so it went on for three long months, April, May, and June of 1969. Sorry? The great uh, it's called the Great Darshan. Okay. It's called the Great Darshan. Thank you. We do not know how one can describe what happened. The only way it can be done is for you to sit down with one who was there. Francis Brabazon has related this great event most beautifully in a pamphlet entitled Three Talks, published by Meher House Publications, Sydney, Australia, in 1969. In this revised edition of God Speaks, certain new points and corrections indicated by Meher Baba have been made. There are also some additions to the supplement. Various of the charts have received minor but necessary changes, and five more charts have been included. One chart was done as a labor of love by L Ludwig Dimphil and concerns mystic, Sufi, and Vedantic terms related to the planes of consciousness as used in God Speaks. This chart was sent to Meher Baba several years before he dropped his body. B B B sorry, Baba. Before he dropped the body. Eraj B. Jasawala tells us that Baba went over it meticulously, making two or three corrections and expressed complete satisfaction with it, approving its usage for God's speech. So whatever we are going to read now has been meticulously gone through by Baba and approved. It's not only just because it has been published after Baba dropped his body, there should be no doubt as to whether it is authentic or not. It was so large, it had to be enclosed separately. Further, footno further, footnotes have been added in the text from separate information Meher Baba gave from time to time. It should also be noted at this time that some terms used under headings denoting Sufi, Vedantic, and mystic terminology are in certain instances not classic terms employed in those three disciplines. Rather, are they terms employed to allow comparative study and better understanding of the theme by the reader? A complete glossary compiled by Ludwig, Ludwig Dimphil was approved by Meher Baba before he dropped his body. In closing, we cannot avoid suggesting an inevitable corollary of the life and words of Meher Baba. While he lived for the inner man, that he might break through the shackles of the delusions of reality by which he, has, he had bound himself, still the clarifications given by Meher Baba have great import for the physical disciplines as well. As one reads the various works given, through, given out by the highest of the high okay. of our times, the implications of all manner of physical sciences are seen to be basic and revolutionary. As those trained in the fields of physics, chemistry, geology, psychology, 
and many other disciplines study the life and statements of Mer Baba, they will quite rightly apply them first to the needs of their own inner natures. However, as his words accomplish the first task of establishing a sense of vital purpose <laughs> and assured support, a second phase of significance will inevitably bring, begin to assert itself. Life begins to move, and it moves both internally and externally. The quick successive recognitions of truths that bore in words are followed by matching insights into the functioning of the external. The simple, almost self-evident statements of Meher Baba are seen to ramify into a kaleidoscope of fundamental and exciting implications. Ramify would mean diversify into multiple fields and kaleidoscope, we all know kaleidoscope, but the other meaning is to succession of symmetrical designs. So whatever Baba says, it takes shapes in a symmetrical manner. He was sparing of words. He did not elaborate. He laid down only a vital reinterpretation of basic truth. Out of that flows the multitude of inevitable conclusions. The physicist, once he has set the wheels in motion to rediscover his essential self, will also begin to discover the impact of Meher Baba <coughs> on his own field of physics. Meher Baba is like that. He flows quietly through all aspects of life, and before one knows it, all of life has become nothing but the fascinating game of watching Meher Baba deal with Meher Baba. Certainly, this is the ultimate in universality. San Francisco, California, April 1973, by Ivy O'Duce and Donnie Stevens. So here we finish the second, uh, the, the introduction to the second edition. Any questions? You, ha you had some questions, no, Neha? Sorry? For the next session. Next session. Oh, you want to make it more difficult for me. <laughs> yes. Oh, this Mahin. gentleman. Mahel. Uh, like, you talked about avatars from Gala, Krishna, Kai, Guha, and... Okay. Baba is the main Shantra, that we should follow that Sri Ram ka kitta to Purana ho gaya. Hmm. So, but God is everything and nothing. God is all-powerful, only present, only... Can we have a mic for him? Is it possible? No. No. I'll repeat. Can you come here and... Of course he is. See, the question here is, if I understand you correctly, Rama was avatar, Krishna was avatar, Christ was avatar, etc. How come their work or their words have faded out? Is that what you are saying? Because you said Rama Yeah, yeah, okay. The point is, to my understanding, as I said in my very first session, this is my interpretation, how I understand Baba's words. Number one is, that the language of the truth is the same, the packaging of the truth may differ from time to time, depending upon the acceptability of the, and the maturity of the humanity of that time to accept it, number one. Whatever the Ram, Krishna, Jesus, Muhammad said, obviously holds good. But one, according to me again, important factor is that much of their literature, whether you call it Ramayana or Mahabharata or Quran or even Bible, Quran, they have come much, much after the avatar has passed over, number one. So in other words, there could possibly, possibly be, it cannot be said that these are the actual words. Like how we say for Baba, God speaks, listen, uh, um, um, discourses, beams, life at its best everything and nothing, the path of love. These are Baba's words, you see. So, it is not that they have faded out. He has come to breathe new life into that which is already there. And when he is breathing new life into it, you know, he is changing the packaging and giving it to you so that it is more acceptable to you at this point in time. 
because somebody had asked Baba the same, more or less similar question, you know. So what new have you come to teach? What new? I mean, this is the same thing which Rama had said or Krishna had said. So Baba's reply would be that if truth can change, then that is not the truth. So it is the same truth, but he is speaking in a language and packaging in, in, a, in a, an attractive packaging so that we can accept it. The language of the truth is the same, it cannot. Basically, I, this is my understanding, what is truth? First of all, somebody asked me the other day, what is truth? I said, if I give a definition of a truth, a definition, by definition, is a limiting factor. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm making... If I define something, that means anything other than that is not truth. Now, truth cannot be defined. Truth is to be experienced. It's only to be experienced. And once you experience, you live and help others to experience it. It cannot be... So, in other words, Baba said that I have not come to give anything new. I have just come to breathe life into old, which, as you rightly said, it has faded. It has faded because of non-utilization. Atrophy. It's not about the truth. It is like somebody chanting Rama's It's perfectly okay. Yes. No, 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 no better. Again, the same thing. Ba somebody had asked Baba that you say that whosoever takes my name at the time of breathing, his last comes to me. That is point number six of Baba's my wish. So what does it mean? And that is where the clarification came even from the Mandali later on that any of the avatar's name or for that matter any of the perfect master's name or for that matter money would say that you know that in certain communities the father is called baba you know or you may have uh, you may have named your son narayan or or oh, say tukaram something so even if you don't mean that tukaram if you are if you are saying tukaram tukaram to your son or even to your servant for that matter you know you will still reach the goal. That is what my understanding of what Baba. So, what you are thinking is not correct means yes, they still have that, the, there is a power in that name. But then again, if you have the latest name, and since we are connected with the latest advent, why not use that name? That's one thing. We all know the story of uh, uh, Quaker Oats, fresh tin of Quaker Oats, I think you know. Anyway, I'll just digress a little bit. During war time, you know, this is the story which Baba narrated. Um, the, the British, the English children, they were brought up, most of them, on oats, Quaker oats. And Quaker oats was a brand name, you know, it was a very, even now it's a brand name, you know. And without that, there is no breakfast. No breakfast is complete. So during the war time, a mother sees that the child always wants Quaker oats, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the morning for breakfast. And she sees that her Quaker oat tin is almost getting over. And she knows that during war time, there is shortage of stuff. You know, there's always a shortage because people hoard, people stock it. So she hurriedly runs to her own uh, known chemist shop or the shop where they sell Quaker oats. And to her great relief, she sees a box of Quaker oats sitting on the shelf. And she's so desperate, she, only one box. So she's very desperate that if this goes away, my, my son would be hungry, you know, how, what would he eat? And so in desperation, he tells, calls out to the man, I want that Quaker oat, I want that Quaker oat. And the man says, Madam, please, today's language, we say chill, cool, cool off, you know, chill, you know, don't. So she keeps on saying, I want. He says, no, I won't give you that, I can't give you that. And she gets more exasperated, that means he's already reserved it for somebody else, you know. Then he bends down and picks up a box of Quaker oat and says, Ma'am, this has just arrived, which means the fresh tin. Now, Baba is asking a question. Which mother would like to go for that when the fresh one has recently arrived? And Baba summarizes the story by saying, I am that fresh tin of Quaker oats. So that is the story. So, nothing wrong if you say Rama, 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 yes? But I have, a, I, also, like, I have read about this particular example long time back and I always had a problem. You cannot compare God to a tin of food. Correct. It's a very bad example. Yeah. So, you cannot compare 
so the okay now the the point is it is your problem it is not baba's problem because baba chose to give that example in all probability it's good that you are you, you are asked, you are saying this in all probability you see any of baba's statements quotes messages i personally feel it has to be seen in the context in which it is uttered context there is every possibility that baba was talking about establishing himself as the avatar or as the latest one and in the audience there was a lady who is a british lady or a english lady and so in order to impress her to make her realize that i am that fresh tin of quaker oats and not thumbs up or Qua or coca cola or whatever what i'm trying to convey is most people read messages of baba without going to the source or the context or the audience that is there before baba and so there is a probability as you rightly said of creating problems in the minds of all of us as to yeah yeah what he is saying is going one step ahead of me what naman is saying is maybe who knows baba must be sensing some emotion in the mother's heart or feeling or maybe at that time the war was on and there was a shortage of quaker oats we do not i don't know the context but i always say if you if it is your problem it is your problem why do you want to make it my problem <laughs> yeah yeah the emotion attached to it that's what he said yeah thank you please I think from next time we should have a third mic so that because those who are on the uh, what Yasmin is saying, Baba never said that you you worship me alone. The worship word is a little. I'm not very happy with worship. Baba says, "Do not worship me, just love me." Baba. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, correct, 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 correct. It's all coming to the same thing. All right. The truth cannot change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what I think you are trying to convey is depending upon the audience also. That's what I said. Okay, depending upon the context, the audience, who's there, and what is going on. I remember one instance where Baba was. Again, we are digressing, but that's very common with what we do when we do reading. Baba was talking about love to small children, how love is different from lust, and how one should encourage love and you know put down lust. And Baba was sitting in his darbar, as we say, with small children. and all of a sudden a tonga comes and somebody comes and ask about marriage and stuff like that so you know marriage and something to do with marriage and sex and all baba was a little you know perturbed because he his audience is the small children you know they are small children so baba gave a long talk on how how uh, unhealthy or how unspiritual marriages are and if you marry then some some calculation he get seven times into multiply seven times, so many karmas it will all and it created many i got so many calls that is it so i said no 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 i am also married i said i said so in other words the context in which a message is given is very important to understand the message in its totality the only answer i can give is now that he has gone i can't tell him that i can't give him that advice you know <laughs> next time when he comes maybe i'll say don't do like this mahen says you just give me god realization you know the point is that the point is there is an aspect called nirgun nirakar which we are not able to perceive 
बाबा वे से परसीव ऑफ गॉड एज दी ओपननेस एंड इन्फिन स्काय एंड इन्फिनिट ओशन एंड सगुन साकार विथ फॉर्म एंड विथ एट्रीब्यूट्स सो वेन ही कम्स डाउन ही बिकम्स मैन अमंग्स मैन ही बिकम्स मोर टेंजिबल ही बिकम्स मोर यू नो यू कैन अप्रोच हिम यू कैन यू कैन गेज हिम यू कैन ऑब्जर्व हिम एंड चेंज आवर वे ऑफ बिहेवियर एंड ऑल दैट सो दैट मच ईजी फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट गॉड इज ऑल अबाउट एंड दैट मच पर हैप्स ईजी फॉर हिम टू गिव अस द स्पिरिचुअल पुश no but yeah we'll i'll remember he i'll remember distort, he will not distort. okay okay now 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 let's let's stick to god speaks but i'll remember next time if i am i'm not going to come i'm going to take baba's name and pop off sorry 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 correct correct so that he can take us to his level no no his point is he he is so his question is but if he does this see listen baba 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 has said this you know that the freedom that is gained after suffering and striving for the truth is is more important than just he can do it like this anything the whole world he can do it why he can go to sleep and do mahapralay and then go back to sleep for ages but he doesn't he doesn't like that he will become unemployed then what will happen so <laughs> nothing nothing absolutely nothing so in other words this is the way it is and there is no answer to why it is the way it is at least i don't have the answer so next time when baba comes you can ask adil has a question yeah adil <coughs> mm. Mm. yes physical okay i think i said this uh, in a sense every time the avatar comes like how we have a meeting we have an agenda the avatars have agendas apart from giving the the, the universal spiritual push apart from uh, preparing the circle members and giving them realization one of the agendas as i understand with my limited intellect is that he he comes to true the imbalance of sanskaric uh, patterns in the universe in other words there is so much of so called wrong or bad and it can only happen by taking upon himself the suffering of humanity now the modus operandi of suffering can be anything baba says that this age is supposed to be the the the, the age of the machines and the wheel is the symbol of machine and so both the accidents happen on the wheel you see and one good that you asked the question one thing i i thought and i forgot after the second automobile accident on the 2nd of december 1956 during that time bhauji was strictly instructed by baba he was suffering from i think um, uh, uh, sorry what is pleurisy not to get up from bed but the situation was such eraj had broken ribs pendu had broken thigh and everything and uh, hip bone so uh, you can't expect uh, bauji to just sleep so he came up he he got up to help them and he when he went to baba baba's first question was why did you disobey me go and go back to sleep and twice or thrice it happened like that see baba puts us in such an such a uh, dilemma that we don't know what to do we we tend to disobey that is when baba told bauji this is very important according to me everything is my understanding you are the cause of my accident now bauji says how can i be the cause i am i was not even there in the in the so called picture i was not there at all i mean how can you say that i am the cause now my interpretation is that our disobedience to baba's laws is the cause of baba's suffering that's my because bauji disobeyed three times he kept on going and baba would always say why i why did you disobey go back and sleep go back and go to bed and then that is where baba said you are the cause of my accident my interpretation would be that when baba says you doesn't mean bauji 
as Bhavji, but each one of us, because of our disobedience to Baba's laws, to the laws of nature, to the laws of truth, that God has to come and take upon himself the suffering of humanity. Is that okay with you, Adil? No. Oh, no. Thank you, Baba. I would, on the contrary, thank Baba to give, to give us the opportunity. All right. Samya, go ahead. Please, Any? You got something? You got something to ask? You have a question? Now, I think if you want to say along, then you will have to come on the mic because there are people online who may not hear. And let us keep all the stories a little short because we need to complete this part. So be careful, huh? Come. Oh, can I give mine? Yeah, no, no, don't worry. Okay. Jai Baba. Welcome, welcome home. Welcome. Thank you. All right. We still have 15 minutes. And so uh, I might not start part one because I don't want to stop it in between. We can have your question if there is any. Yeah, I read it. Ah, we, of course, you have to read it. Yeah. I am, I am not come to establish any cult, society, or organization nor even to establish a new religion. The religion that I shall give teaches the knowledge of the one behind the many. The book that I shall make people read is the book of the heart that holds the key to the mystery of life. I shall bring about a happy blending of the head and the heart. I shall revitalize all religions and cults and bring them together like beads on one string. Meher Baba. I don't know whether it needs any explanation. What Baba is saying is that I have not come to establish any cult or religion. All that I have come to do is to revitalize them, as I said, to, to, to breathe, life. breathe life into the religion. Now, we'll have to jump straight to chapter one or other states of part one, but I wouldn't do that now for a simple reason that continuity will be lost and people may not understand what it is all about on, on, on uh, next Saturday, that is the 18th. So what I could do is one is random <coughs> about religion. Many people have this impression that Baba was not in favor of religion. I don't know how, because that's how I get to know. He said, don't follow religion, follow me. Never ever Baba has said, don't follow your religion. On the contrary, Baba always encouraged people to follow the crux, the kernel, the truth of all religions, because all religions say the same thing. Baba says basically, the job of religion is to create love for God, to create a feeling in the followers to become one with God, and help them to become one with God. The religion as we know today 
is focusing only on the rites, rituals and ceremonies. What we call as Karmakand or it's also called the Shariat. Anything wrong in that? No, absolutely nothing wrong in that. But what Baba says is that if you are honestly honest and sincerely sincere in following the tenets of your religion with your heart, with your feeling, then this very Shariat will take you to Tariqat. What is Tariqat? Tariqat is the inner spiritual path, the involutionary journey, the path to God realization. So it is this very religion, if done not mechanically, not as a matter of ritual, not that we have to do so, we are doing it, but if done from the heart, will take you to Tariqat. Okay, Samia is prompting not out of fear, because most religions instill fear. Fear and love cannot coexist, cannot go hand in hand. You see, if you fear, then you don't have love. If you love, then there is no fear. So, this Shariat will take you to Tariqat. Tariqat is the inner path. As you tread the inner path, the beauty of this inner path is that you will not be shown the entire road map at once. It is like those sensor lights. When you pass, it will go on and show you the next step. As you go forward, the past light will go off and the next light will come on. So it is only step by step by step we will be guided on the tariqat, which is the inner spiritual path. With that passing, you reach what is known as marefat. Marefat is the gnosis. Marefat is the inner spiritual knowledge. That knowledge you don't need to read books. It just comes. It just comes. That is called Marefat. And going beyond Marefat, you reach Hakikat. Hakikat means truth or realization or self, whatever you call it. So that is the pathway. Shariat, Tariqat, Marefat, Hakikat. Unfortunately for many of us, we get stuck in the Shariat. We think that is the be all and end all of everything and we are happy because it is very convenient, we don't want to exert more into going into this particular path. <coughs> Baba's father, Sheryarji, was not lettered, means he did not study, but yet he could read Persian, he could read Hebrew, he could read Urdu, Hindi, Gujarati, all that was there, Marathi. But so once Baba's sister Mani asked Baba, how is it that our father, who never studied, knows so much? So Baba was sitting like this and there was a curtain, a long curtain over here. He just drew the curtain away. It's like this. When, when you draw the curtain out, the light comes. There is no need for such knowledge to be, as we say, you know, you mug up, to mug up something or to read the book. It just comes from within. Because, as Baba says, spirituality is not an accumulation from without, from outside. No. It is an unfoldment from within. It automatically unfolds from within. You don't gather spirituality. Spirituality is already there. And the oft-repeated example which we all know is that of a sculptor. A sculptor brings a big piece of, let's say, marble, and he has to make, let's say, Ganesha or any Buddha, oh, Mer Baba, okay, Mer Baba, out of that marble, thank you. So what does he do? He only chips off the unwanted part. And the image of Mer Baba is already there within. So Baba says, in each one of us, Baba gave this example, if I'm not mistaken, it was to Elizabeth Patterson or it could be anybody else, I don't know. 
तो वॉट इज एलिजेथ पैटरसन हु इज एलिजेथ पैटरसन एलिजेथ पैटरसन इज इक्वल टू गॉड प्लस संस्कार संस्कार मीन्स इम्प्रेशन इम्प्रेशन गार्बेज कचरा वॉट एवर यू कॉल इट द मोमेंट द कचरा गोज वॉट रिमेन्स इज एलिजेथ इज इक्वल टू गॉड गॉड इज इक्वल टू एलिजेथ यू सी सो इन अदर वर्ड्स ईच वन ऑफ आस आर अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ गॉड we call it baba plus our garbage of impressions the moment garbage of impression goes away you know what remains is god so our job in the process of reincarnation which is what we are all in the process of reincarnation we have managed to somehow come out of gas gases stones metals minerals vegetables insects fish bird animals human beings so we have done all this journey and we have gained full consciousness we have going all the three bodies gross subtle and mental and we are called human beings now the human the, in the very first human form baba says the consciousness is full consciousness is whole and complete there is no further stretching expansion extension evolution of conch it is already complete but that completed if completely evolved consciousness is burdened with samskaras or impression so this what we call choryasi lakh 84 lakhs of threshing thappar thara thar thara thar is nothing but removal of those samskaras and once that is samskaras what remains is full consciousness so that's it i just wanted to not start a new chapter that's why i went about yeah you have a question what is the first good and bad samskara the thing good is here that okay let me first see the time i don't want to extend the time we still have 5 minutes in short somebody asked somebody asked me a question when i was once talking in some public domain that you are your zoroastrian 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 talks about good thoughts, good words, good deeds. That's the end of the chapter. What more did Mir Baba said? What all, what else is there? Is there anything more? I said yes. Good thoughts, good words, and good deeds also bind. Yeah, that's I am saying that. And therefore, God thoughts, God words, and God deeds does not bind. Which means what I am take telling it in a nutshell. We can. talk in for an hour on this it's a very beautiful subject you know where you do what is known as niskam karma or akarma karma or you do acts in such a way where the agent of action is other than the self i'm try <laughs> i know i know where i'm trying to say in baba in discourses say that you create a provisional ego which is subservient to that of the master in short before doing anything think it is baba who is doing it after doing it offer it to baba don't be attached to it don't say wow 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 so nice or if something doesn't go hmm, what happened you know so everything is baba just offer it to baba if you do that if you do that then on one hand the battery which has been charged through past karmas will get exhausted because you are acting but you are not claiming the fruit of that action i i i aham therefore it will exhaust no further recharging the battery and over a period of time it will all get exhausted yes you can do that but no no this is a very good question many people say when they do good to say baba when they when they are not doing good baba please stay out of the room i am doing something wrong and no invite him in your so called bad deeds also i do that so in the process what will happen automatically the so called bad will not why are we attracted towards the so called bad is because of past karma but when you do that karma when you unwind those sanskaras with in baba's presence over a period of time they will have no 
hold on you. So it's a very good thing. Baba has Baba himself said, if you are doing wrong, think Baba is doing wrong. Baba said that. So why why don't you do it? And over a period of them the time there will be no distinguishing difference between good and bad. It is all Baba and Baba and Baba. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's just two more minutes to go. Yeah, no one has a oh, okay. I will answer. I got. I got. I got. I will answer this question, which will confuse you more. The question is: Avataric period is starting from where? From his birth, or from his declaration, or from blah blah blah, or from his death day, from when the dro he dropped his body. Baba's message is very clear: a hundred years from my manifestation. So, in order to answer this question, I have created more complex. What is his manifestation? <laughs> oh, exactly. So I said, I know, I know. So we really don't know. So the general understanding with the Mandali has been a hundred years after he dropped this body. So that is the period, autaric period. So we are all very fortunate. Just make him our, as as Baba says, you know, love and direct relatedness with the avatar is the high road of all roads leading towards uh, towards him. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah. and that is that is all that is required between that period, and then the time will come when that so-called highway will become narrower and narrower, like how we said it will become narrower. At that time, by that time, seven hundred years again, avatar will come. No one has. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That is precisely I'm saying. I am not. I am not. I don't know. My answer is I don't know. I'm not qualified to answer. What is his manifestation? Why I'm saying is because I have I am privy to Alobaji saying, Balnatu, Adi Kairani, Eraj, Mani, they all have different viewpoints on what is manifestation. So Baba always leaves something like this so that we can discuss, debate, even fight. And in the process we remember him. Sure. Because remembrance is the main thing. Naman has a question. Yes, the point is, yeah, we have to dedicate it to Baba. Yes, but as you rightly say, Baba may buffer the suffering because he was present at that time. I don't know whether I'm making myself clear because when we invite Baba in whatever we do, that's what Baba says, he acts as a buffer so that whatever that we need to suffer or we have to suffer, he is cushioning it that way. But we have to suffer. We have to suffer. Suffering is good, no? What is the harm here? Okay, I think we've, we've, we've crossed our timing. I would like to be within time. This, this can go on till the night, you know. Thank you very much. Thank you, beloved Baba. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you, Baba. Jai Baba. Next Saturday we are there. Uh, that is 18th of uh, November. We are having again the reading. Thank you, Naman. Thank you, Johan. And thank you, Rakesh. He's not here, but he's been a very integral part of uh, pushing me into this. Jai Baba. <laughs> thank, you, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for your brilliant question.